And we have our wonderful regulars, Sam. Uh, Jing, Wen, Hung, Joanna, Lauren, Bills joined us. Um, we're really excited once again to have the one and only Emma Doyle joining us with the Empower Hour here on uh, Tuesday evenings at 6 p.m. our time. Um, we are, I'm really enjoying the way, Emma, that you're uh, introducing these incredible topics. So without further ado, I'd like to uh, pass over to my partner, Emma Doyle, here at Centre Court 360, where our mission is to develop and to assist the athletes become great students. Over to you, Emma. Love it. Love it. Thank you, Conrad. Uh, all right. So just while I'm pulling up my PowerPoint presentation and I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Uh, I would love just everyone, um, remember if you have done, we, we, this is now module seven, Conrad, unbelievable. Um, a couple of we're here already. And of course it is direction, finding your direction. Um, certainly uh, as I switch over to our, to our PowerPoint, um, please just type in the chat box, how many modules have you done? So if you've done all seven, you just put in the chat box, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. If, you've, if this is your first one, just put in seven. Um, if you've uh, done three and seven, um, just write in the chat box how many modules you have done. Um, as I go over to share my screen and get the PowerPoint started. Oops, just get that going. Um, how, give me some feedback, Conrad. How many, how many people have done all seven? Anyone? So I believe, uh, yeah, we've, we've got, uh, Joanna's done seven. We've sure. had Lauren do all seven. We've had Hung do all seven. Uh, Jing Wen's done one to seven. So we've got a, we've got a really good, diligent following, Emma. I love it. I love it. Fantastic. Um, one of the reasons this module is so uh, so important is because of how many people I work with that are really unclear on where they're heading. And we're gonna cover one of our strategies is called the clarity paradox, uh, in that heading in any direction is often better than procrastinating and going nowhere. Um, so once you do find a path that you enjoy, it's incredible how the universe will open up and opportunities will gravitate towards this direction. I know that Conrad and I, we both live our purpose and I know I know that because I feel it in your energy and, and your mission and I'm sure other coaches um, will will certainly be able to relate to that when you find that one thing that just you can take one step towards any direction um, well then you'll find out whether that's not where you want to go as well so um, really cool strategies around that so that's that's where we're heading so thanks everyone for sharing that where does it live on the genius model it lives under the core component of purpose so again this is module seven this is the last module within the purpose side of our empowerment project model, our genius model. So that's where we are, um, as you can see. And then where are we going? Just quickly after that, we'll head up to courage next week and then we'll round it off with communication. And we've got some really cool conflict resolution strategies in communication, which is so important these days, especially under the topic of parents and coaches and authentic communication. So, um, so that's where we're, where that, this is where we're at today. Uh, let's jump in the chat box. Um, who wrote down their old story from last week reframing? Did anyone have a go at 15 points? I would love to see that and see in the chat box who wrote down their old story or had, remember if you're a parent, maybe you asked your, your child to have a go at your old story for 15 points. Anyone? Anyone? Come on team, let's have a look. All right, but I'm in the car, <laughs> it's at my house. <laughs> Thank you, Lauren. Thank you, appreciate it. I love that you're checking in from the car. This is the best thing about virtual reality these days. All right, for 30 points, you had to flip your old story into your new story. I know that I've been working really hard with a client of mine in doing that, and she's been reading her story out every single day this week. It's been really, really cool. Um, for 40 points, you had to then consult a mentor and have a mentor then embellish 
the, uh, the story or help you out with a couple of words here and there. And if you read it out loud for the week, you won the game. Um, Lauren, did you win the game? I know you're in the car. I love it. Mum helped. Mum is a great mentor and we, we really appreciate um, we appreciate that, getting a parent perspective um, to help you win the game. Um, Conrad, did you, with any of your players, um, have you done a bit of work with this the story? Yeah, well, we have. I, just uh, to butt in very fast, we've been working this week. Um, I've got a handful of players at the moment. I think I might have mentioned to you a few weeks ago, some young girls that we're working on trying to uh, develop the inner voice. But not only that, we're using methods of reframing and so um some of them have been just kind of i've had them replay a match that they played in the past that didn't go so well and that's been the kind of catalyst to um find a way to reframe and, and you know it's been very interesting so i'll share a bit of that later on awesome awesome love it all right so as we do every week section one is the why what are some of your pot potential unforced errors um, these are the, some of the common ones that I hear, but as I'm going through them, as I always ask you, just to in, invite you to reflect on your own potential unforced errors, uh, you lack direction, maybe you've lost your focus and you keep going around in circles, so you feel really stuck. Um, also, I know my niece uh, suffers from this one a little bit where she wants everything. Like she wants, she doesn't want to miss out. Um, she wants a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this, a bit of this. And so as a result, she ends up really not going in any direction. Um, or equally, you feel pulled in different directions. I know maybe some parents listening might be able to relate to that. Or, um, and then the other most common unforced error that I hear of is that you're just going through the motions. Uh, it's almost like you're just a bit unsure of yourself and change is really hard. So you stay in your bubble, in your little house and in your little world. And that's a potential unforced error. If anyone's feeling brave um, to reflect on their own with regards to direction, any procrastinators in the house, uh, any, I know my biggest unforced error is I say yes to everybody. So boundaries, you know, so it's almost like I can't focus on my own direction when I'm too busy saying yes to everybody else. Um, so feel free if anyone was feeling brave to throw that up in the chat box there. As we do every week in section one, we flip our unforced areas into winners. So instead, of course, at the end of this uh, session, because I appreciate everyone's time so much that I will make sure that you were going to have some practical strategies on how to become laser focused. Um, you're going to be able to find different ways to consider your inner genius and you're full of life because I'm going to actually teach you today the coolest method I know on how to coach yourself, coach yourself. So that's one of my all time favorite strate strategies and tactics. Um, so that's what you're going to be, I promise, but by investing in your time here today and, and watching this webinar that you will be able to, um, you'll be able to do that. And uh, I guess, um, you know, certainly in your own mind, as I just said, the way that I would, I, I was vulnerable, I told you what my unforced error is in saying yes to everybody. So my own direction gets, um, gets put aside. So flip that. Practice the art of reframing and flipping straight away. So instead of saying yes to everybody around me, could be something along the lines of, uh, I, I embrace saying yes and I have the power to say no. I choose my boundaries carefully so that I can follow my direction. So I just flipped one of my own unforced errors. Um, yeah, always bending your schedule to fit others. It's it's unbelievable how many times we do that. And I think, Conrad, that's why you and I get along so well. We have a similar personality in that. And so if you're always bending, then your own direction um, certainly gets impacted. So if we were to flip that, just that, that statement alone and practice flipping it, uh, then it would be, uh, I choose my schedule for the day. And if an opportunity arrives, um, that's insignificant, I will, I will adapt it. Uh, but otherwise my schedule is my schedule for today. So just, you know, it doesn't have to be that complicated, but that's an example of how we would flip a statement like that. Um, story time. 
So I guess one of the stories that I wanted to share today, um, and I'm sure Conrad will be able to relate to this as well, is just the fact that no matter whether you're a parent, no matter whether you're a coach, and players might not know this just yet, or athletes don't know this yet, we all have the same goal. And that is to strengthen the character of the people that we coach. So no matter how many forehands and tournaments they win and backhands, etc. Um, and this story is one of my favorites. Um, this is a client, um, you can see there how young I look in that, in that photo, wow. Um, this is Michelle Brikey, she's from Sydney, and I traveled as her tour coach for many, many years. Um, then she got into the Australian Open Juniors, and, uh, and then you'll see from um, the next photo down here, this is us at the, um, the World Championships in Prostyov in, in Prague, many, many years ago, um, coaching. And that was a really clutch match. Um, it was a doubles match and we were five one down in the third set. And she was just always just so open to be able to take on board strategies and tactics um, to the point where now, of course, uh, this next photo is from last year um, and it is um, obviously at her wedding and watching just her grow, you know, from that that young girl, um, the, the first tour actually she was, I think she was 10 when the first one when I took her away um, to be at her wedding um, last year and then this was a photo she sent me just recently uh, of her having her first um, little baby called Heidi. And she, you know, she will often call me with regards to direction um, and decision making and still sort of consult me. So I think with regards to practical strategies, hey, what do you, you know, what do you think in this situation? And even though I'm not a parent, um, I'm, I'm an auntie myself, uh, you know, she certainly does tap into the relationship that we had and especially decision making. That's been one of her biggest things that I know that I've been able to help her with. And as a parent, she's um, she knows that the role that a coach can play and a parent can play in the life of a child. So that's just a really cool story I wanted to, to share with regards to some of the decision making strategies that you're about to add into your um, athlete's toolkit or your parenting toolkit or your coaching toolkit. So section two are our five strategies. And remember, I'm always gonna ask you to remind me of, um, remind me of one of the strategies. So uh, the, uh, the link down the bottom here, um, I don't know, while I'm talking about this, Conrad, I don't know if you'd be able to type that link into the chat box. There's a, there's a mission for you. Not, probably not the easiest link or you can take a photo of it or, or something if you could type that in. Um, but, I'll, sorry, mate. I'll handwrite it. Just give me one second. Yeah, no, take your time because this will take me a little while to explain it. So you're not under too much, too much pressure. But strategy number one is um, something that comes uh, from... Uh, Joseph Campbell's, uh, it's called The Hero's Journey. And it was sort of a, uh, a monomyth that he created. And I, I use it a lot for um, reflection. So if you have a learning experience, it's an amazing reflection. If you go on a camp, a training camp as an athlete, it's an amazing reflection. So let me just take you through the phases of The Hero's Journey something happens in life that we're called to go on an, an adventure. Um, maybe your parents said you should go to this summer clinic. Uh, maybe um, somebody said you should join us on the virtual symposium. Something happens in your world, you, you're called to go on an adventure. And then when you go on that adventure, what happens is you'll often cross a threshold. So what do I mean by that? I mean that essentially a coach uh, may say something that you disagree with or if you listen to the virtual symposium, maybe a parent might say something that you agree with or disagree with, but your threshold is challenged. And, uh, and essentially, um, um, thank you, Conrad. There's, there's a link there. And if anyone wants to copy and paste that link, I, I explain this, <clears throat> um, it's, on a, it's a YouTube clip of a reflection on a conference that I, that I spoke at. And I go through the stages of the hero's journey. Uh, because what happens is after you're called sort of to go on that adventure, um, you, and, and when you sort of go past the threshold into the unknown, often your views or the way you strike the ball or the way you play hockey is challenged. 
And you'll either grow from that challenging experience, and, and trust me, a lot of these experiences can be positive or negative. For example, a coach might say something to you about your um, um, movement, and it's not very um, positive, uh, and you're in the abyss. You're like, oh, that comment really didn't resonate very well with me. And when, if you can have the tools and the strategies to pass through the abyss, then what happens is you transform. You either take on board that comment or you give it the just an iPod because you now you've got the strategies and you know what that means, just an interesting point of view. And so when you return, as you can see here in the, in the image, when you come back, you've come back as a different person. You're not the same person as you were when you went on the adventure. Now, if you think about um, Star Wars or Shrek or any of those famous movies, they, they all, and all those great movies, they all follow this, this, um, this monomyth. And in life, what happens is when we come back as a different person, we're not the same person as we used to be. And then you'll see we're called to go on another adventure and we go through the, so <clears throat> the cycle again. Um, here's another way to look at it as well. Um, just another sort of example there of, um, of going through the stages. So in your ordinary world, you're in the status quo. Remember, people would rather stay in their bubble than change. Not, not anyone on this webinar, because you're investing the time, the effort and the energy in learning this. You're called to go on, a, on an adventure, you depart, and then you go through a series of <clears throat> somebody said something or you felt something or someone challenged, challenged you. So you hit a crisis and you either come out of that crisis as you've transformed um, and you've taken on board maybe the learning from a bad loss. Maybe it could be just that you lost, you lost a match or you, um, you had a serious situation and then you return to a new life with you and you're in a different, you're in a, you're a different person to what you were. Um, it's a fantastic model. As I said, if you want to take a deeper dive, just copy and paste that YouTube link. And it's only a 15, I think it's a 15 minute presentation that I did for a group of coaches on how to reflect on their own journey. And I go into a lot more detail about how a lot of these, um, these famous movies use this same concept. So how does this relate to direction? Well, it's about, we have to be prepared to accept that we all need to go on a journey. If I'm a 14 year old athlete, then how do I get to become 16? Uh, Emilio Sanchez last night did an awesome presentation on his phases, um, which I can even tell you what they were. Um, let me just go to my notes. Of course, I'm still learning every day. Um, initiation, formation, advanced, transition, elite. So within each of those phases, you're called on a journey. You can't stay in the initiation phase, otherwise you'd be doing 75% technique and that's all you'd be doing if you stayed in that initiation phase. So that's why it's so important as strategy number one to relate to direction. Um, the hero's journey. I really love the concept. It only came into my world um, a few years ago. So I hope, hope you um, get something out of that. Strategy number two is, as I mentioned before, the clarity paradox. So I, I certainly, when I, even as a young coach, I remember being in a lot of meetings and I, I remember uh, not wanting to say anything because when I'd hear someone say something, I'd go, oh, yeah, I agree with that. Oh, I agree with that. Oh, so I would just sit on the fence and I never had the, the courage to sort of speak up. Um, maybe you can relate to that as an athlete um, or a parent even. But basically sitting on the fence doesn't really help with helping you go in a direction. So for example, if you're not sure of a coach or, or what business to choose, then staying on the fence, of course, and doing nothing um, gets you to go nowhere. But the clarity paradox is taking any direction is better than not taking a direction at all. So let's say you choose a, a coach for your child and you, you take action and you head down one lane, guess what? It's not working out. You've got the choice to choose lanes. You've got choice to choose a different coach or a different business. Um, but a lot of people um, just sit on the fence way too long. 
uh, so much about direction on the motivation scale as we're motivated towards pleasure or away from pain and even taking action to know oh, I don't like that or that's not that's not my neurology my body's not feeling great about that decision then at least you made it and at least then you can make then you can make change so um, so that's strategy number two strategy uh, number three is what we call the purpose matrix. Now, this is something that I um, I love. I use in my life coaching all the time and is really awesome for athletes. So if you think about an Excel spreadsheet and you just make a list of um, everything, let's just say it's your, your sport, um, you could list everything about your sport. And then in three columns, you basically have those three words, your skill, your passion, and your impact. So let's say, um, let's go for a tennis example. So in my spreadsheet, let's say I've got my, my forehand. My skill on my forehand might be medium, but my passion to build a great big weapon on my forehand is high. And what's the impact on, on my game? Well, tennis is a game where when the ball comes down the middle of the court, 70% of the time, you're going to be looking for that forehand. So the, the overall impact is very, very high, but my skill level is medium. So, and if you do that, just make a spreadsheet on, on, on um, maybe it's your tennis game, but maybe it could be a decision. Uh, it could be a decision of a coach. Let's say you've got coach A, B and C, and you put them in your spreadsheet. And then well, what's their skill level? What's their background? How passionate? are they and how passionate are you if, if you know that coaching relationship, what that's like? And then what's the overall impact? If you go with coach A, who's more strict, what's it gonna, you know, is that something that you need at, the, at this time in your life? And then of course, don't forget if you've got a critical decision to make, the purpose matrix is solid gold. Uh, if, you know, let's say it's a decision about what college you wanna go to. Um, your D1, D2, D3, right, what's my skill? Is my skill good enough for D1? How's, where's my passion? Okay, I don't mind playing D3. Because the overall impact is maybe the D3 school uh, is in a much cooler, safer area or it's closer to home or it's further away from home, depending on what you're, um, what you're, you're motivated by. But um, I absolutely love the, the purpose matrix. So I'll, I'll pause for a breath there. Um, and just go over to Conrad just on those first three strategies. If anything um, came up, any question, any, anything resonate, any comment that you want to make? Yeah, uh, yeah. look, Emma, I, I really, it's touching me deeply. Like I said to you right now, <clears throat> I'm working with some players who I actually would call in the formation phase. So um, I love the way that uh, Emilio sort of rounded out those stages too, because Kids have to understand the journey. It's a, it's a long journey. I mean, Emma and I have the privilege of remembering. I remember Emma when she was 14 years old and, uh, you know, I was the same. And that was 30 something years, 30 years ago. We were running around tennis courts then. And, you know, it's such a long journey. I'm still learning. I'm learning a lot about certain things. So one, one of the points I wanted to bring up was I have one girl. We have one girl who is a really good little tennis player, very young but super experienced, been all over the world, had a lot of great coaches, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and the question came up yesterday, actually, talking to her mom. One of her coaches, who's a superstar coach, very tough, um, but very fair, but very tough, and has very little wiggle room. And so the personality of the player is the opposite. There a lot of wiggle room, very rarely gets in that really locked in stage. And so they were having a, an issue understanding each other. And the question came up, should the player adapt to the coach or should the coach adapt to the player? And this was a conversation we had. And what was interesting was my end feedback after hearing it all was the intention of the coach is really good and very honest, but it's tough. So I don't want him to change his way because I believe it's going to help you to strengthen your core. And in the end, that is going to help you to become a better athlete. So if you agree with me, I want you to go away, think about it, write down exactly what you said. 
What's his passion level? Is he the right coach for you? Does he have the skill set? Um, do you feel like you're going to improve? So I guess that would be impacting. Um, yep, the purpose, exactly. The purpose matrix was pretty much, you know, without using those exact words, was pretty much what we were going through and it really helped her. She came away and said, yeah, you know what? I understand what coach is asking me to do. I didn't originally get the message right, but by writing these things down, I realized that's who I want to be. So I'm going to change. And I thought it was really, really impressive that what you're, we're going through is exactly what we talked about yesterday for a young player in formation. And I'm sure a lot of kids go through that, whether it's team sport, individual sport, teachers. You know, you change teachers every year. And often those teachers have a different methodology or a different style. So it, it's definitely something I think that would come across at some point. Um, yeah, just two comments came up for me uh, on that, Conrad. One was the um, the ego. Often we get we trip over our own ego, uh, and, and and that's when we get stuck in an ability in an inability to to want to change. Um, but if you if you have strategies like um, one of my favourites is a bird's eye view, you know, so so rise above like a bird, like a hawk and look at it from the player's perspective, from the parent's perspective, from the coach's perspective, and then from the Hawks' perspective, four different perspectives, and then all of a sudden, it's amazing what different insights that you're gonna have. Yeah, you're right. Um, so, and I love what you said about the strengths. Um, let's say, you know, if we always go back to, well, the strength of the coach is this, and the strength of the player is this, and the, the player needs a little bit of discipline, and then maybe the coach needs a little bit of flexibility. So when they do what will depend on what phase they're in and what they need to add to their game and their toolkit. Um, so I really, I really loved those insights. Thank you for sharing. And, and hopefully everyone really, um, yeah, can have a go at the purpose matrix, especially if you've got a big decision that you really need to weigh up. It's a great, it's a great strategy. All right, moving right along uh, onto um, strategy number four. So, Learn from setbacks. I should have I should have made that a a, uh, a game in the chat box. Name name this person, um, but the name is already down there. It is of course Steve Jobs. So at 30 years of age, he was left devastated and depressed after being removed from the company that he started. Um, so much of direction and finding your direction is about learning from your setbacks. Every single time. Um, Emilio last night said you have to learn to lose, reframe losing um, as a learning opportunity. Um, some pretty successful failure stories right here. Uh, you know, I'm not sure if anyone's watched recently the Michael Jordan documentary, um, but certainly after being cut from his high school baseball team, he went home, locked himself in his room and cried. And then, you know, he talks about all how many times he had that last shot, that, to, that last basket to make within the final seconds. And, you know, how many times he missed it before he made it. Before he made it. Um, so, you know, I certainly think there's some pretty good examples up there. Um, you know, you know, Oprah Winfrey, I'm a huge, huge fan, um, but certainly was demoted from her job as a news anchor because she wasn't fit for television. Well, she certainly proved them wrong, didn't she? Um, but uh, some pretty cool little ones up on, up on the screen there. Uh, you know, there's certainly many cliches that if you've never failed, um, you've never tried anything new. And I'm sure everyone will agree that we have to learn from our setbacks and the way we go about learning from the setbacks is whether you can bounce back or not and how much so many times clients of mine you know and i'm talking about clients in their 20s at a quite a high performance level have said comments to me you know when i was 12 um this coach pretty fa a pretty famous coach you know said to me that i'll never make it past the juniors um and how much that they hold on to those comments and sometimes that can be fueled, it can fuel their motivation, but just be so mindful that as much as, remember that comes back to the motivation scale of motivating towards pleasure versus away from pain. Um, so it's okay to be motivated away from pain at the beginning, but you do need to slowly shift towards going towards pleasure. So for example, when you decide that you wanna do your tennis or your hockey or your lacrosse for you, when you decide that you want it, like you really want it for you, 
um, and there's no contingencies on whether you, you that you do want to stop at any time, then that's when things can really shift in your game. And I've seen it time and time again. Um, so learning learning from setbacks is um, is of course super super critical. And the final strategy that I want to share is very very um, made a huge impact in my life. So I've actually shared my purpose statement there. So um, this is my purpose statement. This is why I'm on this webinar. I harness energy and empower people to take authentic action so that they can see real possibilities beyond what they ever could have imagined. Now, that's me distilling pretty much, you remember last week we did my new story? That's me now distilling your new story into one sentence. Um, now, there is a bit of a process of doing that and, and obviously um, if anyone wanted to reach out and know the steps of how to do that, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm sure we can work something out. Um, but for me, that, that, that statement right there, if at the end of this webinar, I can help harness your energy and empower you to take action. Remember, what do we do every week? We write a game plan. And if I've empowered you enough and inspired you and harnessed your energy to want to take action on the game plan, then new possibilities will open up that you probably didn't even know were there. Uh, that is my purpose statement. And having one sentence of why you get up in the morning, why am I, I mean, Conrad, you, I have to ask myself, why would I run a virtual tennis symposium free and donate to charities? Um, you know, I, you know I, I'm like, I have a newfound respect for anyone that runs, organizes a conference and a symposium, but why would I do it? Because it taps into this, this mission. It taps into my mission of harnessing energy and empowering people. And I've always felt that the coach player parent triad is something that needs bridging, that needs harnessing. Um, and so that's why, that's why I'm doing it. And that's, you know, and I know at the end of the week, when it's all over, I'll be really grateful um, for doing it. Right now I'm in the trenches in organizing it. Uh, but it, you know, that, that purpose state for, for me is so, so powerful. So I'd love um, you to write in the chat box for me, even if, me saying this has triggered something for you like what's one word like if you had to distill even like your purpose down to one thing like what's the one thing like why do you you know why do you play your sport um it's sort of like a what what drives you what, what when you get out of bed in the morning what, what's your real purpose of going to center court or going to your training or um just just to have a go i mean obviously the word that comes out of my statement for me is of course energy it's something that people say it's it's my inner superpower one of my my core superpowers um but it's also what fuels my motivation is to help people with this this gift of energy um i'd love in the chat box if um yeah teammates teammates awesome fantastic um one lauren i really appreciate you sharing that um you, you know especially like team sports and even in tennis even creating a team um, is, is really awesome what, what drives you. Constantly learning drives me because the day we stop learning is the day we die, let's be honest. Um, and people that challenge us, challenge the way, that's, see the challenge part two in your statement is the hero's journey. Mm -hmm. If you don't go on that hero's journey, you won't be challenged. Um, you won't, if you don't do these educational pieces, someone Every, you know, you'll just go, oh, if everyone around me says what I say, then literally we will not, will not learn. So, um, so thank you for, for sharing that, that. So if I can add, Emma, uh, tapped into um, number two, the paradox, where, you know, I'm a person that really enjoys hearing other opinions. Um, you know, probably when I was a bit younger, it was a little hard to hear something that I didn't really agree with. I, I'd almost scrunch up and say, no, no. But I've learned to understand that listening to those other perspectives often adds to my perspective, which um, is something that, you know, I think everyone can take away listening to other people's opinions, but also to have true belief in your opinion. That I think is really important as well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this morning we had one of our uh, speaking time slots was the young game changers. So we had four coaches, average age of around 20, mid twenties. 
and we got their opinion on COVID, on home practice, on families, even though none of them were parents. And it was absolutely brilliant. Um, fantastic. So diversity of opinion, young people's opinions. Um, I'm forever uh, constantly fascinated by this next generation of how they see the world, because obviously we didn't grow up in, in the digital world. Um, so tapping into their their resources, I think, is um, is absolutely a huge, huge point. All right, first person to type in the chat box, let's see how our listening skills were going. What was strategy number one today? What was strategy number one? First person to type it in, except if you're driving, please don't type and drive. <laughs> um, but uh, first person typing it in, what was strategy number one? Yay, we got it there, the hero's journey. Thank you, Jing, fantastic. All right. We are up to section three, the how. We're, this is where we now implement our strategies. So the first, um, the first tactic uh, is called safety net. Now, again, I'm not a huge fan of the word safety. It doesn't necessarily resonate with my personality, but as a tactic, what I'm actually pretty good at these days is asking myself three really short questions and doing this in under a couple of minutes. So if I've got to make a decision about a certain direction, always I'm asking myself, what's the best case scenario? What's the worst case scenario? And what's the most likely case scenario? Now, the reason it's called safety net is because if you can handle the worst case scenario, then guess what? You're probably gonna take action. You're probably gonna go, the most likely scenario is this, and that's not that bad because I know what the worst case scenario is and, I'm, I, and I can handle that. So therefore I'm gonna take action. And if the best case scenario happens, then, then brilliant, fantastic. That's, that's a little safety net. Like, I know that sounds really, really simple, but it's an awesome tactic. And if you can get, if you can get used to doing it really quickly, you don't wanna dwell in, in you know, you, what's the best case scenario, this and the worst case scenario, and you list 10 things, the worst case scenario, and you get stuck, you'll never take action. So you have to do this quickly. The, the safety net is about the speed of how quickly you can sort of go through that, that sort of process. And it's really about weighing up, weighing up the odds really, isn't it? Um, but a great little, um, a great little uh, tactic. Second tactic is a life coaching strategy and it's called the mirror question. Um, so Conrad, do you wanna type in the mirror question as I read it out in the, in the chat box? Um, it is, it's, this is the question. If you could wake up tomorrow morning and everything is exactly as you would want it to be, what does this look like? Part two of that exact well, actually, I'll get to part two in a minute. Let me just stay on part one for a minute. So, uh, well, it's a little, the reason why this, this tactic is in here, um, little quick background story. Um, I went to, uh, I, well, I ended up working for this woman in Melbourne. Um, she's called the career guru. And I was really struggling with my career and I didn't know what I wanted to do. And, um, and anyway, she had this thing called the career guru. And so, uh, basically she, she, a bit like the hero's journey, she had you go around the room, right? So you started when you were like in primary school and you, you're, you're eating a lollipop while it's saying, what subjects did you like when you're in primary school? And then it takes you through your high school years. And then it takes you through like the next phase of your competencies. And, um, and then at the end you got to meet the guru, right? And so here I am thinking, oh, fantastic. I, I get to sit down with this woman and I get to, you know, I get to ask her like what I should do with my career because I was really struggling with my direction. And what happened is you go in this tent, right? And when you enter this tent, they ask you to pull back, pull back the, um, uh, you know, pull back the curtain, you pull back the curtain. And of course, what is it? It's a mirror there's a mirror when you pull back the curtain you are looking at yourself and so part two conrad if you could type this in the chat box part two of the mirror question is what is holding you back 
So if you could wake up tomorrow morning and everything is exactly how you would want it to be, you reflect on what does that look like, then you pull back this curtain and there you're looking at yourself and it says, what's holding you back? Uh -huh. And I thought that was one of the most brilliant interactive um, experiences that I've ever had. And in fact, I ended up working for that company <laughs> because I just thought it was so good to help people with their direction. And if you could, you know, you've obviously, some of you have popped in the, the chat box there, which, which is awesome, um, your thoughts around that. And so let's say, for example, that you've got, if something does come up for you um, in what's holding you back, this is the third and final tactic. And this is how you coach yourself. Okay. And obviously any coaches listening, this is how we can work with, work with our players. And it's called the grow model. Okay. And it is absolutely solid gold technique. Now, again, the quicker you can go through this, the grow model, the better. Um, I didn't invent the grow model. It is a life coaching tool. It is one of the most famous life coaching tools developed by Sir John Whitmore, who's the godfather of life coaching. And he, would you believe he actually used the concepts from the inner game of tennis, the book by Timothy Galway to help uh, design um, some of these, um, some of the tools and techniques in life coaching. Um, but if you've got something that's holding you back, okay, then you just do a quick grow model on yourself. So what's the goal? So let's say, for example, it's something along the lines of um, you're going to bed late. So the goal would be that you want to go to bed at an appropriate time to make sure you get eight hours of sleep. What's your reality? Your reality is that you get just digitally distracted. So I'm, I'm making this up, of course, by the way. Um, so I'm just giving you as an example, but the reality is that you're, you're digitally distracted. And uh, so as a result, your brain is still going at night and you're not really switching off. And potentially maybe you're, you, you might have a drink right before you go to bed. And so your digestive system or your body's still awake. Um, so then the O is my favorite part of the grow model. This is where you get to explore all the options. So you might put your phone outside of your room. You might decide to read a book before you go to bed, or you might listen to some relaxing music before you go to bed. You think outside the square, you go big, you go bold, and you go through all the options. Like if money was no object, you'd, you'd hire yourself a sleep coach or um, all the different things, you know, limit it with always with no judgment. Remember we did that in module one. And, uh, and then of course you just, you pick something, remember the clarity paradox and you just choose something and you just move forward on it. That's your way forward. So you've just gone through the grow model really quickly as an example of going to bed um, at an appropriate time to get your eight hours of sleep or 10 hours or however much you need if you're a growing athlete uh, to be able to play your best, best um, lacrosse possible. Um, and that is tactic number three. So recapping as we do every week, the game plan, what is the game plan? Well, for this week, it is to do the grow model. So if something's holding you back from that mirror question, I want you to have a go at the grow model. That is your game plan for the week. However, there is something here. Does anyone notice what I've done to help you? This is if you are struggling to know what you should focus on. So a lot of people don't know what they need to focus on. So you switch the G and the R. So if you don't know what your goal is, or you don't know what it is that you don't know, like you're not really sure, if you just start talking about your reality with a mentor, with a coach, with yourself, even if you're just talking it out loud, you'll soon realize, oh, I know, I know what I need to focus on. This is my reality. I am not eating breakfast in the morning. That is my reality. I'm skipping breakfast and that's what's going on for me. So the goal, of course, is to enjoy the health benefits of setting up your day with fuel for success. That's your goal. Can everyone see, see what I did there? But if you, if you do know what the goal is, 15 points, G, and then R is reality. O is the brainstorming of your options. And then if you want to win the game for this week, then write down, of course, how you're going to take action. As I do every week, I ask you to, to take action. Um, so that is the, um, the game plan for this module. Let's celebrate for everyone's time for being here. And of course, uh, what's next? Uh, I love that little picture there. 
Um, courage. Courage is next module, same time, same place next week. And I hope everyone, of course, please tell as many people as you can about these amazing webinars and join us for Courage next week. Uh, the ball, let's see if I can hit my screen today. I've missed it a couple of times today, is in your court. Oh. I think I just got it. <laughs> and um, and please, um, we'll open it up to Q&A. And uh, as I stop sharing my screen, could everyone just type in the chat box um, what's one thing they are going to take action on or one one strategy that resonated or one tactic they're going to add into their playing toolkit or their coaching toolkit. Just go ahead and type it in as I stop sharing my screen with everybody now. All right. I hope you don't mind me using some of your examples, Lauren. Thank you for sharing. <laughs> Wanted to make it as practical as possible. Um, but anyone going to take action? I hope so. What are we going to take? Just one thing in the chat box. Make everybody make it worthwhile. Let's see who's going to take action on something. Drum roll. I think that's the longest silence we've ever had. <laughs> Continue to follow the goals set out and stay committed as I am, especially in the morning with the cycling. Not, ben not bending that schedule. I love it. I love it. Bake a cake. Brilliant. Brilliant. Use the, um, will be the first cake I've ever made. So again, the, that's the goal. The reality is she's never made one before. The options are, could be any number of options. Could be call a friend, get a cookbook, look it up online go to the supermarket and get all the groceries and then boom um the way forward is just when when you're going to do it by so thank you jim for sharing that there's a quick see how i just did a quick grow model on on the baker cake example um awesome so um questions q a uh anyone want to please raise your hand if you want to um unmute yourself show us your video and ask away otherwise conrad has always got a question or two in the mix no, I'm just chomping at the bit too, to get it out. I think give someone else a chance though first today. Well, feel free until somebody jumps okay. in and then we can... So Emma, I, this is a really important one, I think, and I wanted to really get your perspective. How do you, as a young athlete, be it, you know, male or female athlete, how do you go about asking a difficult question to your coach um, or, you know, it might be even for them to explain, you know, what did they mean when they said this? Or what were you trying to, because it maybe struck the wrong chord. How would you handle that? You're a young athlete and there's a scenario where something was maybe said or something was delivered. And it, 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 it didn't hit you the right way. And so you wanted clarification on that, but you didn't have necessarily the confidence to maybe do it verbally or do it in a way that possibly two adults might do it. Yeah. Um, what are your thoughts on that? So definitely for young athletes, uh, it comes back to journaling. We've mentioned the technique of journaling, but not just journaling your feelings because then you get caught and you'll never take, you'll never take action in any direction when you get too much stuck in the feeling. Okay. Um, so, um, so you're better off having a structured um, situation. And this is, uh, I'm almost 100%, but it's two weeks away. I'm pretty sure in module nine, we're actually going to give a practical strategy. Um, but I, I know it off the top of my head because I use it all the time because I struggle with this throughout my entire life. I probably still do a little bit, to be 100% honest. Um, being a Libran, you know, I'm true to my star sign. I'm, I'm always seeing everyone's perspective. Empathy is one of my superpowers, but it's also one of my biggest weak, well, biggest um, challenges, not weaknesses. I see, I picked myself up on my own language there. Um, so I'm going to type it in the chat box as I'm talking about it. Um, so get them in their journal to go through this process. Um, I, first of all, I'll tell you what I call it. I call it T. FFI, we can fly, or sometimes women can fly, right? So a little acronym there. Um, so get them to journal, what's the topic? So what it is exactly that, that's bothering them. Um, this first F is really important. What are the facts? What actually did the coach say or the, the situation? 
And then feel free to add a section on your feelings, um, but not too lengthy. Okay, so th this is how it made me feel sad, happy, angry, frustrated, but you don't want to go like into a into a monologue of, of your feelings. You can do that later in your journaling. <laughs> um, but um, and then the I is the impact. So this is having an impact on my relationship with my mom, my dad, my schooling, or I just don't want to go to centre court at the moment because I'm uncomfortable or whatever it might be. Then, um, and then the, the, the second part of the acronym is um, W is what you actually want. Or well, what is it that you want? Or, you know, always be solution focused, not just this person said that, you know, this coach did this to me. What, what do you want? What, well, what I want is I want um, this, this coach um, to, to be able to ask my opinion, or I want this coach to be able to clarify better what they're talking about or I need to understand the why. Why are we doing this drill? Why are we hitting 30 minutes of cross court forehands? Um, so what is it that I want? Now here's, here's how you, this is really difficult for kids, but this is the most important step. It's contribution. Well, here's how I've contributed to the situation. I'm not, I'm not telling you how I'm, I'm not telling you what I'm thinking or feeling. I'm just like this. I'm just like stone face. Teenagers are brilliant at it. How's your day? Good. What's, what's going on later? Nothing. You know, uh, one word answers, right? So this is how I've, I've, I've contributed to this situation by, you know, I, I wasn't honest or you just didn't know that that's, that's not my top value, you know. Um, it might be your top value, but I don't value creativity. You're, you're off on all these tangents, but that's not my highest value. I want to know exactly what it is that you're, you want me to do. And then finally, like in the GROW model, the F stands for forwards or forward, forward. So moving forward, here's, here's how I suggest we, we could operate. If you write it out a couple of times or you journal it, guess what? It becomes easier and no one can deny facts usually. If you start with facts, if you start with feelings, then it's a different situation. And we're gonna go over um, almost 100% sure that's covered in module nine, but I have so many other things in my head this week that I'm, not, I'm but I know that model so well because it was a game changer for me. Well, that's brilliant, Em. Very, very tangible, very, very clear. Thank you. Yeah, no, you're welcome. Um, any other questions from anyone else on board? Hi, Bill, do you have a question? Uh, no, I'm good. Uh, okay. Did I'm you just enjoy absorbing, it? Coming in late, uh, just absorbing what I can. I'm a awesome. sponge right now. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks Thank for you. being here. Appreciate it. Well, not a lot of questions towards direction because everybody's busy uh, making a plan towards <laughs> where they're heading, and um, and hopefully taking action on uh, on some of the steps. Um, that we um, that we covered today. So um, so Conrad, if there's if there's no other questions from, is there anything else from you? Yeah, no. Look, that that's brilliant. I mean, like I said to you, it's it's so good to have these strategies. I just hope that everyone listening in is making notes like me. I'm running out of paper. I'm a recycler, so I went and ripped up some old paper, and I've got my little notepad here. But um, look, I really love uh, M. What you're doing, I think what you're doing is helping. Um, not only young kids, but you're helping old old bears like me to find ways because every day presents, you know, I'm not going to say problems, challenges. Um, and especially when you're dealing with people, you, you, there's just so much that can be going on. And um, I think a lot of what you've said today is it's very useful personally and also, you know, look, dealing with a team. And in every team, there are many personalities. So Rich. thank you very much. I really hope that everyone is... Is, um, is following and keeping notes. I love the Grow Model M. I think it's very useful and um, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much. So I'd just love to invite um, everybody as we've done, probably you might've sent the email for, through Centre Court, uh, Thursday, uh, 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, I put that link up earlier in the chat box. So if you missed it, just scroll up, it's still there and uh, copy and paste the link and remember it's free to sign up or you can even listen to us for 24 hours free after the presentation or make, make a donation 
to charity. Um, we're, we're, we're pumped um, to talk about, we've got Leighton Hewitt's example of a training program. We've got the car ride home. We've got pre-match and post-match. And Conrad, you'll be happy to know that the format is exactly as we've been using. I thought, why change a winning formula? So this will be the, the first time I'm doing a presentation following the, the why, the what, the how, and the now. Um, so simple, isn't it? Fantastic. Clarity through simplicity. Love it. Yeah. yeah. So uh, hopefully everyone um, or as many of you can join us on Thursday. Uh, but if not, we'll be here, same time, same place, next Tuesday for our module on courage. And uh, yeah, looking forward to boosting our courage. Can't wait as well. Thank you again, Emma, for being there. I know you've been really busy, so it's super special to have you this week. Thanks a lot. And for all our regulars, we can't wait till next week. As Emma says, please invite your friends. Sounds great. Thanks, Conrad. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Yeah. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Take Hunt. Care. Thanks, Jean, Bye -bye. Henry. Joanna, thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. See you next Thanks. Week. Bye. Bye. Take care. Thank you.